तो हेलो गाइस वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टुडे रेलेवेंट वर्सेस इररेलेवेंट कैश फ्लोस वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इट इज आल्सो कॉल्ड रेलेवेंट वर्सेस इररेलेवेंट कॉस्ट ओके सो एंड देन वी विल गो थ्रू वन इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक टुडे दैट इज नोन एज हाउ टू कैलकुलेट द कॉस्ट ऑफ स्पेशल ऑर्डर सो हियर वी गो बिफोर मूविंग टू द डिसीजन मेकिंग साइड सो फर्स्ट वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट डज मीन बाय रेलेवेंट कॉस्ट and irrelevant cost please remember guys by words if you look at the words so relevant cost are those cost which will be charged to the decision okay and irrelevant cost are those cost which will not be charged to the decision so for example let's assume uh, if you for example if you are planning a tour let's assume you are going to visit switzerland and you want to calculate the cost of the tour for example or cost of the decision so which cost will be the part of the cost of the tour that is the co those cost which will be the part of cost of tour so those are called relevant cost and those cost which will not be the part of tour or which will not be the part of decision those are called what irrelevant cost or irrelevant factors so mainly guys so all those cost will become relevant okay even all those revenue and cost will become relevant if those cost uh, will arise in future due to the decision so i'm just giving you example here for example if you are planning a tour to visit the switzerland so obviously guys to to go there you have to book maybe first you have to arrange visa so you will pay visa cost obviously this cost will arise in the future okay so that is going to be the part of cost of tour then maybe you will book the air ticket so you will pay for that so air ticketing cost will also be the part of cost of tour maybe then you will book their resort or hotel to stay so the cost of hotel or resort will also be the part of cost of tour understood so any cost which will which you will incur in the future and that cost that cost is arising due to this decision so those will become relevant cost please remember so the cost that have already been incurred or to which the organization is committed like any cost uh, which you have already incurred okay incurred in the past or way, way which to which the organization is committed like it is it became your commitment okay so those cost are called sunk cost and sunk cost are irrelevant cost not relevant cost i'm giving you example now another example just to uh, give you a broader picture for example you are planning to visit switzerland and maybe you are going to use your own car okay uh, you will take your car there you will go buy your car and this car you purchased maybe 5 years ago okay and now maybe you paid at that time for example 10000 okay so the cost of car which you have incurred 5 year ago okay this 10000 has no relevance to this decision the reason because this 10000 you didn't spend due to this decision so this 10000 10000 you have already spent in the past so that is the, that is why it is called past cost or it is called sunk cost and this is going to be irrelevant the cost of the car is going to be irrelevant because it has no relation with this decision or this car you didn't purchase due to this decision so that is why this this is the sunk cost and this will not be relevant so we have another example here for example a manufacturer is considering upgrading its production equipment due to the obsolescences of its current machinery for example maybe you have old machinery that machinery you are going to replace with the new machinery now okay you want to upgrade you want to modernize your machine so the amount paid for existing equipment whatever money you have spent maybe many years ago okay to purchase this old machine that time whatever money you have spent so that money is going to be your sunk cost so uh, this is going to be irrelevant to this decision because this time you are taking the scene you want to modernize your machine so that is why the sunk cost make no difference in the decision to modernize so it is going to be irrelevant so simply any cost which have already incurred in the past and which has no relation with this current decision for which you are calculating cost so that cost will become irrelevant so then we have here uh, as i told you those cost will become relevant if those 
to be relevant, the revenues and cost must be made in the future. This is the first point. Second point, to be relevant, the cost must be must uh, the cost the cost must differ among possible alternative course of action so actually here i'm going to tell you one terminology which is called differential cost so differential cost differ among the possible alternative course of action what it means so let me give you here example for that and i'll quote two three examples so first let me quote the example for example a manufacturer is considering purchasing production equipment from main company. So you are going to buy a machine from the main company and the cost of machine is $400,000 and the operating life of this machine is five years. Okay. And you have another option. You can buy a, another machine from Neem equipment instead of mean. So you are going to buy from, you can buy from the Neem equipment. Okay. And the cost of this machine is 600,000. So with the estimated operating life of eight years. Now you can see here, you are going to buy a machine. If you will buy a first machine, you would pay 400,000 and the life of that machine is five years. If you would buy another machine from another company, so you are going to pay $600,000 with the operating life of eight years. So here the differential cost is what? 200,000. Because this 400,000, by the way, you will incur, right or wrong? But this 200,000 extra you will incur if you will shift your decision from uh, from main company to the name equipment limited. So here we go. We have another example here. So here it's another definition of differential cost. By the way, definition is the same, but wording is the different here. So differential cost means say what? Differential cost refers to the difference between the cost of two alternative decision. Actually, it is the difference between the cost of two alternative decision. As I told you, here one decision was you can buy a machine from mean company by paying 400,000. And another alternative is you can buy from name limited uh, by paying 600,000. So the difference between the cost of two alternative decision is called differential cost. Now here we go. The cost occurs when a business faces several similar options, as you can see here, you got a two option to buy a machine, machine one and machine machine two. For first machine, the cost is 400,000. For second machine, the cost is 600,000. So that is why when business faces several similar options and the choice must be made by picking one option, you have to choose one and dropping the other. So in that scenario, you will take the differential cost. So we have here another example for differential cost, for example, if you have a decision to run a fully automated operation that produces 100,000 widgets per year. For example, you have manufacturing facility and there you can produce 100,000 widgets per year at a cost of $1.2 million. Of using direct labor. So first is what? First scenario is what? You can use machines to produce widget 100,000 widgets per year and you would pay how much 1.2 million there is another option you can produce the same number of widgets but you are by using what labor so or of using labor to manually produce the same number of widgets for 1.400 uh, 1.4 million so now here guys if you will look at here if you will produce the widgets by using machines uh, by using automated process, you would pay 1.2 million. If you will produce same widgets manually by using labor, you have to pay 1.4 million widget, 1.4 million dollar. So then, what's the differential cost between two alternative is 200 thousand? Because if you will choose automated process, you would pay 1.2 million. If you would choose manual process, you would pay 1.4 million. So that you have to, if you are choosing. For example, manual systems, so how much extra you are paying, that is 200,000 and that is called differential cost. So the differential cost, okay, simply it is the difference between two alternative. So this cost is also relevant. Please remember, I'm going back one more time. So to be relevant, the revenue and cost must be made in future. All future cost and revenue will be relevant. Number two, the relevant cost sometimes could be the differential cost also. And the number three is, what so the only avoidable costs are relevant unavoidable costs are irrelevant so what it means avoidable cost avoidable cost guys if i would say in the simple words these are those costs which are arising or which will arise due to your decision if you will postpone the decision or if you will just 
change the decision. So those costs can be avoided. So if avoidable cost is there, it means this cost is arising specially, specifically due to this decision. And if you will postpone the decision or if you will cancel your decision, so you can uh, avoid those costs also. So those avoidable costs will become relevant. So let me give you example. For example, if you are planning to uh, visit Switzerland, as I told you earlier. So what cost you will pay? You would pay maybe a ticketing cost, hoteling cost, maybe uh, uh, the visa cost, etc. And if you will postpone this decision or if you will cancel this decision that you are not going to visit Switzerland, obviously, so the visa cost, hoteling cost, and uh, uh, hoteling and whatever the cost is that a ticketing cost that can be avoided it means any avoidable cost so what is avoidable cost avoidable costs are always relevant please remember an avoidable cost may be saved by not adopting a particular option or action like if you will not take that particular action so those costs can be avoided and avoidable cost might include for example a raw material cost, labor cost. This is actually in terms of manufacturing of the goods. For example, you are uh, man you are planning to manufacture a product. For that, maybe for example, you you would you would use obviously material and labor. If you will postpone and uh, the decision to manufacture the product, obviously these costs can be avoided, and it means these are relevant. Now we have here another a definition which is called unavoidable cost. Unavoidable cost, mostly we call it as committed cost also. So unavoidable cost is one that cannot be avoided if particular action is taken. Like this cost you cannot avoid. So unavoidable cost, costs are always irrelevant. So for example, if a company has a long-term lease on a building, the closing of the business in that building will not eliminate the need to pay rent, right? If you have taken an asset on lease, okay, and you are you are doing your business there, now you are planning to close that business. So obviously, even if you will close that business, still you have to pay the lease rentals. So it means these lease rentals are an unavoidable cost, okay, because it has uh, it cannot be avoided even you will close your business. So unavoidable cost, mostly these are irrelevant. Understood, guys. I hope so. It is clear. So then we have here again. I'm going back one more time because this is really, really important. You have to understand. First was what to be relevant. The revenues and cost must be made in future. To be relevant, the revenue and cost uh, must be different among possible alternative course of action. And to be relevant, the revenue and cost must be avoidable. If it is unavoidable, so these costs will become irrelevant. So here we have another category uh, of uh, relevant cost which is also called incremental cost incremental cost is also called marginal cost and mostly these costs are variable cost variable cost like as i told you material and labor if you are manufacturing a product okay that is relevant cost because if you will manufacture so you will incur the cost of material and labor but if you will uh, stop the production maybe these costs can be avoided so incremental or variable cost uh, or marginal cost are always relevant so here we go incremental cost is the total cost incurred due to an additional unit of product being reduced like if you will produce <coughs> Uh, extra units what will be the increase in cost that is called incremental cost and obviously if you are taking decision to manufacture extra unit so obviously whatever extra cost you will incur incremental cost you will incur to manufacture extra unit so that is going to be relevant then guys we have for example here example uh, example just for your clarity for example consider a company that produces 100 units of its main product for example, there is a company and that company is manufacturing 100 units of main product and decides that it can fit 10 more units in its production schedule. Like now they have decided they can produce 110 units. Previously, they were producing 100 units. Now they have decided they can fit 10 extra units in the production schedule. So the additional cost it will incur for producing these 10 units is the incremental cost. Obviously, if you want to see what is the cost of these 10 additional units, you have to look what is the increase in your cost. So that increase in cost, which is called incremental cost or marginal cost, and mostly it is 
mostly it is variable okay so these cost will become relevant and then there is another category as i told you so which cost are relevant i told you first those costs which you will incur in the future sometimes differential cost are there sometimes guys incremental cost are there those are relevant so avoidable cost are there those are relevant unavoidable cost are irrelevant and there is one more note cash flows only cash items are relevant to that decision for example if you have any non cash item like depreciation so it is not relevant since it is not a cash flow so cash flow obviously the cash saving or cash inference will be the relevant for you okay so this is also rule and there is a one more category of relevant cost that is called opportunity cost so first have a look uh, what is the opportunity cost and then we will have a look to the look through the example and then i'll give you a couple of examples just to clarify more okay uh, with more clarity that which cost are going to be relevant or irrelevant in specific situations so here we go what is the opportunity cost so guys let's have a look first here i can define in other words also so opportunity cost is an important concept of decision making so here is the definition it is the value of the best alternative that is foregone when a particular course of action is undertaken. Okay, so let me just give you an example here. For example, for opportunity cost, let's assume you have opportunity cost sometimes defined this way also. It is the revenue lost. It is the profit lost. It is the contribution lost. Any word you can use. It is the contribution lost due to, first word is what? It is a loss of contribution okay so it is a contribution lost contribution lost due to what diversion of resources diversion of resources from their best use from their best use okay and those resources are limited also those resources are scarce also like if you are losing anything due to diversion of resources from their best use and those resources are limited so that is called opportunity cost let me give you example here for example you have one machine that machine is being used on the old project okay and that machine was earning profit for you for example hundred thousand dollars on the old project you have only one machine. It means machine is scarce, limited. So now you, you got a new project. And if you would use this machine on the new project, so for example, there this machine will earn 80,000 profit for you. Now look, so when you are diverting the machine from old project to the new project, it means here it was being best used, right? And when you are diverting from the old project to the new project, obviously how much you are losing? You are losing 20,000 of the profit and now you have to think of why you are losing you are losing due to this new project due to this new decision it means whenever you will calculate the cost of this project so you have to take like for example cost of material cost of labor plus you will add this 20,000 because this 20,000 you are losing because of this project and this 20,000 should be covered from this project okay so that is called opportunity cost so here we go so now here we have another example here for example just to define opportunity cost let's assume a new project requires the use of existing machine that would otherwise be sold like here you got a two option you have one machine that machine okay can be sold also and second option is what you can use also on the new project so information concerning the machine is as follow Original purchase price is to 20,000. This is not going to be relevant for this decision reason. This is the past cost. This is the same cost you have incurred maybe many years ago. So this is always irrelevant. Then we have a current carrying value is 5,000. You know, carrying value is always equal to cost of asset minus what accumulated depreciation. So accumulated depreciation is non-cash based item. So that is why, so carrying value is also irrelevant because it includes some components of non-cash based item plus it includes the cost which is the uh, past cost that is irrelevant then they are telling you estimated current sale value is for uh, 4000 obviously guys now look if you can if you are planning to sell you can get 4000 but if you would use it for example 
if you would use it. So it means then this money you are losing, right? You to use. So this 4,000 will become the opportunity cost. Understood? So here we go. By uh, undertaking the project, we miss out on the opportunity of selling the assets and thus have an opportunity cost of 4,000. So for example, this is what whenever you would calculate the cost of this use, so you should include this 4,000 as opportunity cost in this decision. So now here we have guys some other example just uh, 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 to clarify more. So here we have some practice example just to see, just to decide these costs are relevant or irrelevant. So here we go. Identify which of the following costs are relevant to the decision specified. So decisions are specified. Here we go. They're telling you, first of all, this is the decision here in the first category. Is this cost, whatever the cost is explained above, is this cost relevant to the decision to proceed with development of the new product? Actually, here decision is what? The development of the new product. And you have to decide this cost, whatever is explained above, is relevant to the development of the new product or not. So here we go. The salary. This is the information now. The salary to be paid to the market researcher who will oversee the development of the new product. So actually you are maybe going to hire one market researcher. So who will look after the development of the new product? Okay, this is new post. They're saying this is the new post of the market researcher to be created specially okay, for the new product. But the 12,000 salary will be a fixed cost. Okay, that's good. So even it is a fixed, but you have to look, this cost is arising due to the development of the new product and this post is specially created due to this development of the new product. It means this 12,000, even it is fixed. So it is going to be relevant for this decision. So whenever you would calculate the cost of uh, the product, you should include the salary of a market researcher also. So it means this 12,000 is uh, going to be relevant. Then we have another scenario. Let's have a look first, please. Here we go. To decide it is relevant or not. So let's read the first scenario. They are saying that the dollar two thousand five hundred additional monthly running cost of a new machine to be purchased to manufacture an established product. Like uh, you are going to actually buy a new machine here, and if you would buy, you would incur. 2500 uh, monthly running cost okay and first thing guys you should remember because this cost will arise in future and this cost will arise due to the purchase of new machine so it should be relevant okay then what they're telling you the new machine will reduce labor cost by three thousand dollar per month okay this is the reduction in labor cost it is the benefit which you will get so this because this benefit will arise in the future and it is arising due to the purchase of this machine. So this revenue or cost saving would also be the part of relevant okay, factors. So it means it's also relevant. It means this is the cost which is relevant. This is the saving which is relevant. Then they're telling you since the new machine will save on labor time, the fixed overhead to be absorbed. This is absorbed overhead which is always based on your estimate. They are telling you the fixed overhead to be absorbed by the product will also reduce by $100 per month. Okay, this is what this $100 per month for the product. Okay, as overheads are absorbed on labor hour basis, guys, please remember. So this is simple rule. If you have a fixed cost, so fixed cost, don't look fixed cost per unit. No, you have to look, you always, you have to look always fixed cost in total. If fixed cost in total, it is changing. So then, Maybe if the, due to this decision, total fixed cost is increasing, it may become relevant. Or if total fixed cost is decreasing due to decision, so reduction can also be the relevant. But in per unit terms, so because there is no information in the white, uh, provided uh, in terms of total fixed cost, if it is not provided in terms of total fixed cost, but only provided with per unit data, so then we would say it is irrelevant, okay? Irrelevant because fixed cost, Per unit depends upon the number of units also. If you'll produce more units, fixed cost per unit will reduce, right? So that is why you have to look for the fixed cost in total. Don't look in per unit terms, okay? So now what was the question? The question is, are these costs relevant to the decision to purchase the new machine? Like this is your decision, you are going to buy a new machine. So is this cost relevant? Yes, this 2,500 is relevant uh, because this running cost you will incur if you will buy the machine so 
it is because the machine it is relevant this three thousand dollar per month which is the saving in labor cost that is also relevant because it will arise due to this machine but this fixed cost there is no clear information the total fixed cost is changing or not so we would say it is irrelevant if you don't have clear information then we have here for example another thing they are telling you office cleaning expense there's another scenario now so there is a cleaning expense of 100 and $25 for next month. This is for next month. The office is cleaned by contractors and the con like see this office is cleaned by contractors. It means you are paying 125 like a fixed cost. The contract can be cancelled by giving one month notice. Like if you want to cancel this uh, contract, you have to give notice of one month. Is this cost relevant to decision to close the office? Like for example, let's assume today. If today you are closing the office, so obviously this 125 cannot be avoided in one first month because you have to give notice period for one month. So if you will, if you are taking the decision to close your office today, so this 125 cannot be eliminated in one month. So it means this 125 is going to be irrelevant in the first month. Okay, but in the second month, if you are calculating cost, because that time it can be avoided after serving the notice period of one year that time it can be relevant but so far if today you are calculating the cost of decision so this 125 uh, you have which you have to pay due to your commitment so that is going to be irrelevant because you cannot avoid it so it is unavoidable but for the one month only okay so it means how would you answer you would say this 125 for first month is unavoidable so it is irrelevant but for second month it could be avoided if you will give notice today right so then it can be relevant but in the first month it is irrelevant then we have here another point for example expenses <coughs> of dollar 75 paid to the marketing manager like you have paid 75 dollar to marketing manager and this uh, was Due to uh, this was to reimburse the managers for the co cost of traveling to meet a client. Like what happened actually, the manager has traveled uh, to uh, the client, okay, to meet the client, and he spent seventy five dollar. And now, as the company, you are paying seventy five dollar back to the manager. Okay, then they are telling you with whom the company is currently negotiating the major contract. So maybe the manager is visiting the client just to negotiate. Uh, the contract so is this cost relevant to the decision to continue negotiation this is the very important word like if you want to continue the negotiation in future so is this 75 is irre is relevant i would say it is irrelevant the reason because this you have already paid now and now you are taking this you know you want to continue the negotiation so because this 75 you have already paid to the a manager and it is irrecoverable you cannot recover now because you have already paid so this 75 should be irrelevant but whatever the cost you will pay from this point where you decided that you have to continue with negotiation so whatever cost you will incur from this point to onward that can be relevant but this you have already paid and it cannot be recovered now so that is why it is going to be irrelevant so this was guys uh, just a basic discussion about relevant factors and irrelevant factors I hope so it is clear.